With a heavy heart, I am here to announce that Aretha Franklin is deathly ill and her death is imminent. As source confirms, she has been ill for a long, long time. So there's a story that just broke recently that Aretha Franklin, um, his death is reportedly imminent and um, she's gravely ill. People reported on that Franklin, 76 years old, has been ill for a long time, but didn't want people to know and didn't want to make it public yet. A report echoes the claims made to TMZ by a close source to the singer who said that Franklin could go at any time, noting that she was down to 85 pounds. Roger Friedman of Showbiz 411 was the first to report that the soul singer was nearing the end, noting that, noting that her family is asking for prayers and privacy as she suffers from cancer in a Detroit hospital. So she's in a hospital. Uh, Friedman noted that Franklin was reportedly first diagnosed with cancer back in 2010. Wow, that's eight years ago. She gave her final public performance in August of 2017 at Philadelphia's Mann Center months before performing at an event for Elton John's AIDS Foundation in November, in, at which Franklin garnered concern with her noticeably gaunt appearance. Uh, the source says that Aretha is surrounded by family and people close to her. And she will be so missed as a mother, sister, friend, cousin. But her legacy is larger than life. It's not just that Rolling Stone called her the number one singer of all time. Or that she is the queen of soul. Long live the queen. Um, Detroit news anchor Elrod, El, Everod Casimi and good friend of Franklin came to have spoken directly to the singer and noted that she was resting comfortably and surrounded by close friends and family. Confirmation that Franklin is gravely ill came months after the singer canceled a slew of shows in the spring following doctor's orders that she rest. Rumors that Franklin had been diagnosed with cancer had persisted for years, but she never publicly confirmed she was suffering. Aretha Franklin had previously announced that her next album, a brand new album, is scheduled to be released in November. So it's her new album's out in, in this November. And uh, I don't think she's going to make it to the, uh, to the opening of that, uh, that new album. Uh, who, who is Aretha Franklin? She was born in Me Memphis, Tennessee in 1942, a gifted singer and pianist. Franklin toured with her father's traveling revival show and later visited New York where she signed with Columbia Records. Franklin went on to release several popular singles, many of which are now considered classics. In 1987, she became the first female artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in 2008, she won her 18th Grammy Award making her one of the most honored artists in Grammy history. The fourth of five children, Aretha Louise Franklin was born on March 25, 1942 in Memphis, Tennessee to Baptist preacher Reverend Clarence La Vaughn C.L. Franklin and Barbara Siggers Franklin a gospel singer. Franklin's parents separated by the time she was six and four years later her mother succumbed to a heart attack. Guided by CL's preaching assignments, the family relocated to Detroit, Michigan. CL eventually landed at New Bethel Baptist Church where he gained national renown as a preacher. Aretha's Frank, Aretha Franklin's musical gifts became apparent at an early age. Largely self-taught, she was regarded as a child prodigy. A gifted pianist with a powerful voice, Franklin got her start singing in front of her father's congregation. By age of 14, she had recorded some of her earliest tracks at his church, 
which were released by a small label as the album Songs of Faith in 1956. So there's something. Here's a tip for you. If you go out on eBay or wherever, look for that album, a little small album called Songs of Faith, done around 1956. That's going to be worth a mint. So buy it now while you can. When I'm done, I'm done with this video, I think I'll go myself and take a look if I can buy one. Um, moving on. She was also performed with her father's traveling revival show and while on tour befriended gospel greats such as Mahala Jackson, Sam Cooke, and Clara Ward. But life on the road also exposed Franklin to adult behaviors and at the age of 14 she became a mother for the first time with a son, Clarence. A second child, Edward, followed two years later. With both sons taking her family's name, Franklin would later have two more sons, Ted White Jr. and Keycalf Cunningham. Songs and Albums Aretha, after a brief hiatus, Franklin returned to performing and followed heroes such as Cook and Dinah Washington into pop and blues territory. In 1960, with her father's blessing, Franklin traveled to New York, where after being courted by several labels including Motown and RCA she signed with Columbia Records who released the album Aretha in 1961 so her first official album with Columbia was uh, introduced and released in 1961 that there's another tip go and try to find that album because that that album's going to go way up in value through two tracks from Aretha though Two tracks from Aretha would make the R&B top 10. A bigger success came that same year with the single Rockabye Your Baby with a Dixie Melody, which crossed over to number 37 on the pop charts. But while Franklin enjoyed moderate results with her recordings over the next few years, they failed to fully showcase her immense talent. In 1966, she and her new husband and manager, Ted White, decided to move was in order and Franklin signed to Atlantic. Producer Jerry Wexler immediately sh uh, shuttled Franklin to the Florence, Alabama Music Emporium fame recording studios. I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You was the song she sang, backed by the legendary Muscle Shoals rhythm section, which included session guitarists Eric Clapton and Dwayne Allman. Wow. Aretha recorded the single I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You. Boy, I gotta listen to that song again with Eric Clapton and Dwayne Allman. Probably two of the best guitarists ever that ever lived. The best, of course, is Jimi Hendrix. There's no doubt about that. The best guitarist that ever lived ever since and still today is Jimi Hendrix, in my opinion. And uh, that's... Uh, the song I Never Loved a Man the Way I Loved You has both of those guys, Eric Clapton and Dwayne Alban. I've got to listen to that again. That's That's got to be a great song. In the midst of the recording sessions, while quarreled, White, okay, I'm going to read that again. Um, okay, White quarreled with a member of the band, and White and Franklin left abruptly. So, looks like that was her husband quarreled with one of the band, and Franklin left. But as the single became a massive top 10 hit, Franklin reemerged in New York and was able to complete the partially recorded track, Do Right Woman, Do Right Man. Then the song Respect came around. Hitting her stride in 1967 and 1968, Franklin churned out a string of hit singles that would become enduring classics, showcasing Franklin's powerful voice and gospel roots in a pop framework in 1967 the album i never loved the man the way i love you was released and the first song on the album respect an empowered cover of an otis redding tract reached number one on both the r b and pop charts and won aretha her first two grammy awards she also had top 10 hits with baby i love you think chain of fools i say a little prayer sweet sweet baby since you've been gone and you make me feel like a natural woman all those songs are 
absolute classics. I grew up in the 60s and I remember all of those songs. Just amazing. She's been dubbed the Queen of Soul. Franklin's chart dominance soon earned her title the Queen of Soul, while at the same time she became a symbol of black empowerment during the Civil Rights Movement. In 1968, Franklin was enlisted to perform at the funeral of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., during which she paid tribute to her father's fallen friend with, her heart, with a heartfelt re rendition of Precious Lord. Later that year, she was also selected to sing at the National to sing the national anthem to begin the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Amidst this newfound success, Franklin experienced upheaval in her personal life, and she and White divorced in 1969, but this did not slow Franklin's steady rise, and the new decade brought more hit singles, including Don't Play That Song, Spanish Harlem, and her cover of Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Waters. I don't know if I've ever heard that one. Amazing Grace, spurred by Mahala Jackson's passing and a subsequent resurgence of interest in gospel music, Franklin returned to her musical origins for the 1972 album Amazing Grace, which sold more than 2 million copies and went on to become the best-selling gospel album of all time. Franklin's success continued throughout the 1970s as she branched out to work with producers such as Curtis Mayfield and Quincy Jones and expanded her repertoire to include rock and pop covers. Along the way, she took home eight consecutive Grammy Awards for Best R&B Female Vocal Performance, the last coming for her 1974 single, Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. That, that was a good one. Career struggles. By 1975, Franklin's sound was fading into the background with the onset of the disco craze. Now, I remember that. I was in junior high school, and uh, the disco just... <laughs> disco really, really took off. It really got popular. Uh, most of us rock and rollers didn't like it. And uh, there was a big rock and roll and disco. There was always conflicts between that those two groups of people. But disco was very, very popular for a while. Um, an emerging set of young black singers such as Shaka Khan and Donna Summer began to eclipse Franklin's career. So yeah, disco really took off about that time. And I think disco lasted about 1975 all the way to 1979. It was really, really hot. And I think in 1980 it started to fade, if I remember right. Disco just started to go bye-bye. So it lasted four years or so, and it was hot, really hot, for about four years. Okay, she did, however, find a brief respite from slumping sales with the 1976 soundtrack to the Warner Brothers film Sparkle, which topped the R&B charts and made the top 20 in pop, as well as an invitation to perform at the 1977 presidential inauguration of Jimmy Carter. In 1978, she also married actor Glenn Turman. I don't know if I know him. A string of chart failures ended Franklin's relationship with Atlantic in 1979. The same year, her father was hospitalized after a burglary attempt in his home that left him in a coma. As her popularity waned and her father's health declined, Franklin was also saddled with a massive bill from the IRS. However, a cameo in the 1980 film, The Blues Brothers, helped Franklin revive her flagging career performing think alongside comedians john belushi and dad Aykroyd, the blues brothers what a great movie if you've if you've never seen i'm not sure how old you are but if you've never seen the blues brothers it's it's out there i think it's even on youtube you can check it out but it is amazing maybe vimeo but it is an amazing movie you've got to see it i'm sure you can rent it at the wherever you rent movies you got to watch that movie it's just awesome and if you love that kind of music 60s music uh r b and and the blues you want to watch it because there's a lot of old greats in there that sing and they're they're it's it's really funny funny movie too and it moves fast there's a lot of action but uh blues brothers john belushi dan Aykroyd, one of the best movies of all time you know 1980 you know i was uh I was uh, 19 years old. 
So let's see. Okay, exposed her to a new generation of... of uh, in fact, I was older than that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, exposed to a new generation of R&B lovers. And she soon signed um, to Arista Records. Okay, her new label released 1982's Jump To It, an album that enjoyed huge success on the R&B R &B charts and earned Franklin a Grammy nomination. Two, two years later, she endured a, endured a divorce from Terman as well as the death of her father. So she had some tough times. More albums and songs. Who's Zoomin' Who in 1985, Franklin returned to the top of the charts with a smash hit album, the polished pop record Who's Zoomin' Who. Featuring the single Freeway of Love as well as a collaboration with the popular rock band, The Eurythmics. The Eurythmics, you remember them? Um, the record became Aretha's biggest selling album yet. I knew you were waiting for me. Her follow-up song, 1986's Aretha, also charted well and eventually went gold. With her duet with British singer George Michael, I knew you were waiting for me hit number one on the pop charts. Franklin became the first female artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I didn't know that. So in 1987, Franklin became the first female artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Did not know that. She was also awarded an honorary doctorate from the University of Detroit. That same year, she released the album One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism, which won the Grammy for Best Soul, gospel performance following another relatively quiet period in her career in 1993 franklin was invited to sing at the inauguration of bill clinton and the following year she received both a grammy lifetime achievement award and a kennedy center honors so she's won about every award you can think of which is good because if she's passing soon i'm glad they gave her all the awards they could because um she's not going to be around much longer to uh, get any more awards. Um, everything's going to be posthumously. But she would also be the focus of multiple documentaries and tributes as the decades progressed. A rose is still a rose. Nearing its conclusion, Franklin reprised her former role in Blues Brothers 2000. I didn't know that. Releasing a gold-selling A Rose is Still a Rose and stood in for Luciano Pavarotti, who was too ill to accept his Lifetime Achievement Award. With her rendition of Nessun Dorma commanding stellar reviews. In 2003, Franklin released her final studio album on Arista, So Damn Happy, and left the label to found Aretha Records. Two years later, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freeman, Freedom and became the second woman ever to be inducted into the UK Music Hall of Fame. In 2008, she received her 18th Grammy Award for Never Gonna Break My Faith, a collaboration with Mary J. Blige, and was tapped to sing at the 2009 presidential inauguration of Barack Obama. With 18 Grammys under her belt, Franklin is one of the most honored artists in Grammy history, ranked among the likes of Alison Krauss, Adele, and Beyonce Knowles. In 2011, Franklin released her first album on her own label, A Woman Falling Out of Love. To support the project, she performed several concerts, including a two-night stint at the famed Radio City Music Hall in New York with fans and critics alike impressed with her performances. She successfully proved that the Queen of Soul still reigned supreme. In 2014, Franklin underscored that point with Aretha Franklin sings the great diva classics which reached number 13 on the pop charts and number three on R&B in February 2017 the 74 year old Queen of Soul told Detroit radio station that she was collaborating with Stevie Wonder to release a new album I must tell you I'm retiring this year she said in an interview adding I feel very very enriched and satisfied with respect to where my career came from and where it is now i'll be pretty much satisfied but i'm not going to go anywhere and just sit down and do nothing that wouldn't be good either in january 2018 it was announced that franklin had handpicked singer and actress jennifer hudson to play her in an upcoming biopic in august 12 2018 it was reported that the gravely ill franklin was in a detroit hospital 
surrounded by family and friends. So that's just a couple days ago. So she is, her death is imminent. She probably will die within the week. Um, of course, I hope not, but it's looking that way. Uh, cancer, is, she's in the hospital. It's not a good sign, and she's surrounded by families and friends. So let's all say a quick little prayer for Aretha. She had a pretty good life and uh, pretty good success, and let's just hope it's not too painful for her in the end. And uh, take those tips and go buy that. If you could find that original album that she originally made, that's going to be worth a mint um, if you're a collector. And uh, even if you're not, a, even if you don't want to sell it, if you're just a collector, get it because I'm sure it's a great album to have. And I'm definitely going to check out a couple of songs that I've either forgotten or I've never heard. So let's uh, everybody take your hats off to Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul. And. Uh, Please share this video out there and please um, subscribe. And I appreciate every single person that watches my videos. I appreciate, appreciate you very much. And have a great, great, great evening or night or morning or wherever you are in this great world. Take care.